I received a great comment on one of my videos from Fiona and she wants to know how can a couple doing penile rehabilitation together make the process more fun? So in this video, I want to share with you three strategies that I've seen in my own practice with clients on this journey work and also what the literature suggests works too. So step number one sounds simple enough, but go to appointments together that are about erection aids and rehabilitation as a couple. So this study here called the eroticization as a factor influencing ED treatment effectiveness found that men and their, and their partners who used erectile dysfunction aids you know, longer and also had more enjoyment when using them, the factor that influenced it most was that the partner was involved right from the beginning. So they understood how the aids worked, how they could also get enjoyment when using these aids uh, with their partner. And they sum it up in their hypothesis at the end as our prediction that they found from this research is that when a partner is present and enthusiastic about the ED aid from the beginning, it will be eroticized and have more prolonged utility. I would add, from my experience with couples though, another part to this, and maybe this is more addressing healthcare professionals who might be listening, is that when a couple comes together to learn about penile rehabilitation, not just to move all of the focus onto the man and onto his erection, but to open up the conversation to other sexual function changes that may be in the partnership. So I often see, especially heterosexual couples, where the female partner has maybe gone through menopause or after childbirth found that the way they experience pleasure and the way that their vulva operated was completely different. And in that situation, you can then open it up as an opportunity for both members of the partnership to go through a discovering of their sexual function and how things work now and work differently together. So not just you might want to use a vacuum erection device, but how about also using a lubricant or a sex toy once you understand where their partner is as well. And ultimately, mostly what couples are looking for is that they can still receive and give pleasure together as they did before treatment. So coming back to focus on that is still a way of promoting penile rehab ongoing. A second strategy that I've seen be highly effective is when couples look at this experience as a reason to actually step back and introduce new intimate habits into their relationship, which are usually called for because spontaneity is something I see so many couples really grieving and wishing they could get back after a treatment. So with erectile dysfunction, especially after prostatectomy, a lot more intention has to go into inducing an erection. It can take a lot more of an intentional time and planning. But within that intention, there's also something that can be gained, like when you intentionally plan a great holiday, you've got something to look forward to. So a lot of people hear the idea of planning sex and think, goodness, that just sounds quite, again, very clinical and formulaic and not bringing in the sexiness we're looking for. However, if you instead intentionally plan every day to just be doing something fun to chat each other up, and when you have planned sex or you've planned a date night on a Sunday, beginning that process of foreplay on the Thursday, you know, kind of snacking before you go to the main course, so to speak. And I think this is demonstrated so well by this wonderful article written by Ros Baker called Why Men After Prostate Cancer Often Make Better Lovers. She and her late husband, Tony, went through this journey together. And something she mentions here, and I quote, is, Looking back, I realized that we were happy and contented because we both never stopped chatting each other up in some way or other, so we never fell out of love. I think that's a great example of while you're bringing in these habits to make sure you're constantly doing some form of penile rehab, bring in habits as well to make sure that you're remaining close and remaining sexual, even that is beyond the erection. And my third strategy might sound kind of counterintuitive to the title of this video, but also accepting that at times, this probably will not be fun. And if you're watching this now and you're thinking, this isn't fun at all, I'm very frustrated. I'm finding it difficult to say to my partner, you know, this is what's going on. And I meet so many men who come in for an appointment alone because they'd rather kind of fix the erection first and then introduce their partner because they don't want to overly burden their partner or they just want everything to go back to normal. This is not an easy journey for any couple, no matter how close you are. There will be times you're feeling frustrated, you're just really wanting to regain that intimacy like you used to have. And what I've seen work the best here is communication. It's saying honestly to your partner, look, I love you, I am feeling frustrated, I really wish I could you know, have intimate sex with you in the way that we used to have. 
uh, that also is great. You don't have to put on this brave, smiley face and think that everything is now tango dancing and planning date nights. There is also a lot of frustration in this, but opening up and staying close through that intimate communication down the line will then serve you to have a good baseline for bringing fun and bringing new fun activities in. Thank you for watching the video. If you found this helpful, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and to hear when the next video is launched, you can sign up to the Touchy Subject Members Club and I'll pop how to do so in the description box below along with some further resources on what we've just talked about.